University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. Tonight's fixture is a local derby in that both teams are part of the University of London, despite being over 200 miles apart. There's a place in the second round for the winners and a place in the playoffs for the losers if and only if they're among the four highest scoring losing teams of the first round. Now, making its debut in this competition, the University of London Institute in Paris traces its origins to one Edith Williams, who went to the Sorbonne to train as an English teacher in the late 19th century and started holding English classes in her flat. The institute that grew out of that venture joined the University of London in 1969 and works in partnership with Queen Mary University to promote the study of French language and culture, international relations and law, and it's housed in rather grand premises overlooking the Esplanade des Invalides. Former students include the artist Francois Gio, who was also Picasso's muse, and the news presenter Fiona Bruce. With an average age of 22 and representing around 120 students, Let's say bonsoir to the team. Hi, I'm James. I'm from London. I'm studying for a Masters in International Relations. Shumai, for any of you, Jack. This is their captain. Salut, je m'appelle Liam et j'habite à Paris, but I'm originally from Gainsborough in Lincolnshire and I study French. Evi, I'm Neve. I'm from Port Erin in the Isle of Man and I'm studying French with history. Now, Goldsmiths College has been part of the University of London since 1988, its site having been purchased by the Worshipful Company of Goldsmiths nearly 100 years earlier for the building of a technical and recreative institute. It became Goldsmiths College in 1905 and began to shift its focus towards the arts to distinguish itself from the many trade and craft-based institutions in London at the time. Unsurprisingly, therefore, tonight's team say the sciences may not be their strong point. Alumni include the artist Graham Sutherland, Lucian Freud and Bridget Riley, the pop impresario Malcolm McLaren and the hairy biker Dave Myers. Representing around 8,000 students and an average age of 23, let's meet the Goldsmiths team. Hi, I'm Keshava. I'm from Bangalore and I'm studying for an MA in Creative and Life Writing. Hi, I'm Yayan. I'm originally from Halifax and I'm studying Politics, Philosophy and Economics. This is their captain. Hello, I'm Diana. I'm from New Orleans and I'm studying an MA in history. Hi, I'm Jamie. I'm from Belfast and I'm studying history. Well, the rules are the same as ever, so fingers on the buzzers. Here's your first starter for 10. Plays by Tirso de Molina, Thomas Shadwell, and Moliere, and a poem by Byron all draw on the story of which figure? One popular legend identifies him as having been a Spanish nobleman in the fort... Goldsmith's Guha. Don Juan. Don Juan. Don Juan is correct, yes. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses on a work of literature, Goldsmith's. Published in the last decade of the 16th century, what is the title of the major allegorical poem by Edmund Spencer, whose characters Thank include you. Sir Guillaume, Sir Calidor and the Red Cross Knight? The Fairy Queen. Correct. Which character in The Fairy Queen has a name that has come to mean exaggerated boastfulness or a person with a tendency for empty blustering? Oh. Braggadocio or like. Braggadocio? I mean, I don't know. Correct. What title did Benjamin Britten use for his opera to mark the coronation of 1953? It's one of several names that Spencer uses in The Fairy Queen to represent Elizabeth I. The Virgin Queen. No, it's Gloriana. Ah. Ten points for this. Its English name denoting its resemblance to an organ of a conifer, which tropical fruit is known in many European languages by the first part ah. of its binomial. Goldsmith Isaacson. Pineapple. Pineapple is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses this time, Goldsmiths, are on a short history of the world by H.G. Wells. In each case, identify the historical figure from Wells' description. Firstly, a religious figure of the 8th century BCE, according to Wells. In his great utterances, the prophetic voice rises to a pitch of splendid anticipation 
and foreshadows the whole earth united and at peace under one God. So it can't um, be good for shifts. It's, 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 it's No, it's it's Buddha's fifth or sixth century, so it's okay. not Buddha. It's not Moses. Yeah, could it be Moses? It's, Moses. it's not. Uh, when is Moses supposed to be? Earlier than No, way earlier than that. The 8th century BC, it's really early. Oh, do, do we okay. want to yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Moses. No, it's Isaiah. I'm... Secondly, a figure born in 551 BCE, of whom Wells wrote that he conceived an ideal of a better government and a better life, and travelled from state to state, seeking a prince who would carry out its legislative and educational ideas. That sounds like Confucius. Yeah. Yeah. Confucius. Correct. Yeah. Born in about 428 BCE, a man who, according to Wells, was the first to write a utopia, that is to say, the plan of a community different from and better than any existing community. Plato. 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 Correct. Yeah. Ten points for this. In the titles of two poems, Philip Larkin used what animal as a metaphor for a bird? Goldsmith's Guha. Toad. Toad. The, the toad is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses are on fossils, Goldsmith. In each case, give the name from the description. All three end with the same three letters. Oh. Firstly, a fossil genus of cephalopods in the form of a walled, chambered shell. They were once called snake stones because they were thought to be petrified snakes. Trilobites? Trilobites? No, they're ammonites. Oh. Secondly, a fossil marine arthropod with a distinctive three-lobed, three-segmented form. It dominated the seas in the Cambrian period. They look like horseshoe crabs. Uh, <laughs> what are they called? I'm going to go with trilobites yeah, again because yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Trilobites? It is trilobites, yeah. yes. And finally, a term coined by the English geologist William Buckland in 1835 for the fossilized excrement of animals. Coprolite. Coprolite. Coprolite is correct. <laughs> We're going to take. A picture round now. For your picture starter, you'll see the flag of a sovereign nation. Its design has been preserved, but its colours have been replaced with all of those on the flag of a bordering country. For ten points, name both the countries whose flags have been combined. Goldsmith's Guha. China and North Korea? No. Anyone like to buzz you? Your lips down. Panama, Costa Rica? No, you're nearly there. It's Panama and Colombia, but Costa Rica and Panama have the same colours in their flags. So uh, we're going to take the picture bonuses in a moment or two, but let's see if we can get a starter question right first. Ten points if you can tell me who wrote the 1915 novel Her Land, a utopian novella depicting an isolated all-female society that's learned to reproduce by parthenogenesis. She also wrote the short story The Yellow Wallpaper. Goldsmith's Isaacson. Gilman. Gilman is correct, yeah. yes. So you get the picture bonuses, more uh, the hybrid flags using the design of the flag of one country and all the colours of the flag of a country it borders. Again, I need you to name both countries. Firstly, which two flags, both with two colours, are combined here? So it's China and... What's the blue from, from what borders China? Mongolia? Mongolia? Russia, Russia. Mongolia? Uh, Bhutan, is it? Bhutan? Yeah, China and Bhutan. Bhutan? Bhutan? Decent guess. Uh, China and Bhutan? No, it's China and Kazakhstan. Oh. <laughs> Secondly, which two flags, both with three colours, are combined here? Well, Trinidad's an island, so that doesn't help. Niger and Chad. Niger and Chad. Correct. Finally, which two flags, again, both with two colours, are combined here? Macedonia and Greece. Macedonia and Greece. Correct. Ten points for this. Born in Warsaw in 1879, Vander Landowska is particularly associated with which specific keyboard instrument? In 1933, she became the first person to record Bach's Goldberg variations on the instrument in question for which they were originally written. Goldsmith's Guha. Organ. No, anyone like to buzz from the London Institute in Paris? You may not confer, one of you can buzz. Ulip Griffiths. Synthesizer. No, it's the harpsichord. 
How can they have really been written for a synthesizer? <laughs> Ten points for this. Born in Halifax, John Walker shared the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1997 for the explanation of the enzymatic process that produces which energy carrying nucleotide? It's often known by a three letter abbreviation Ulip Alcock. ATP? Correct. Right, your bonuses are on artists this time, London Institute in Paris. Noted for his large-scale frescoes and decorative paintings, the 16th-century artist Paolo Cagliari is more commonly known by what name, indicating the city of his birth? Florence. You don't have to whisper. Florence. Florence? Florence? No, it's Veronese. Yeah. Secondly, after the region of his birth, what by name is often used in reference to the 17th century artist Claude Gelet, whose landscape paintings influenced artists such as Turner? Uh, Turner. I guess, any guesses? Guess. Um, any idea? Which we want in the region? Yeah, just any region. <laughs> yeah. Aquitaine. Normandy. Let's have an answer, please. Nominate Merritt. Oh. Aquitaine. No, it's Lorraine, Claude Le Lorraine. And finally, the name of which English city is often attached to the name of the 18th century painter Joseph Wright, whose works include a philosopher lecturing on the orrery? Which English city? <laughs> no. All English city. York. I don't know. York. No, idea. York. York? Oh, it's Joseph Wright of Derby. Ten points for this. I need the names of two title characters here, regarded as a highly personal story that reflects aspects of the author's marriage. Which tale of love between a mortal man and an immortal elf maiden was published in a new edition in 2017? Goldsmith's Guha. Baron and Lucian. Correct. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses about films on Nobel laureates. Firstly, based on Michael Frayn's play of the same name, which film stars Daniel Craig and Stephen Ray and revolves around a meeting between the physicists Werner Heisenberg and Niels Bohr? Copenhagen. Copenhagen. Correct. Michel Yeoh played the title role in the 2011 film The Lady, a biographical film about which political figure who was under house arrest for 15 years? Aung San Suu Kyi. Aung San Suu Kyi. Correct. David Haig portrayed which British writer in the 2007 television film My Boy Jack, set during the First World War? Rudyard Kipling. Rudyard Kipling. Correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> set to take its name from the silver trinkets acquired in the region by the explorer Sebastian... Goldsmiths Robinson. Argentina. Now, I'm afraid you lose five points. Sebastian Cabot in the 1520s. Which estuary in South America is formed by the confluence of the rivers Paraná and Uruguay? It's the... Ulip Merritt. Mocha. No, it's the River Plate. Ten points for this. When viewed from Earth, which of the stars of the Milky Way has an absolute magnitude of plus 4.8 and an apparent magnitude of minus 26.7? Goldsmith's Isaacson. Alpha Centauri. <laughs> no. Anyone like to buzz from that? Ulip Alcock. Sirius. No, it's the sun. <laughs> Ten points for this. <laughs> the name of which waterfowl links the following? A seaside resort on the Isle of Purbeck, an early European settlement in Western Australia, the star of the 1950 film Sunset Boulevard, and the Welsh city formerly named Copperopolis. Ulip Dan. Swan. Swan is correct. Well done. <laughs> you get three bonuses on Elizabeth Stuart, the eldest daughter of James VI and I. Firstly, in 1619, Elizabeth Stuart became queen of which kingdom of Central Europe as consort to Frederick I and V? The what? I can't hear you. Nominate Merritt? Uh, the Palatinate? No, it was the Kingdom of Bohemia. The Palatinate was earlier. Secondly, Elizabeth is sometimes referred to as the Winter Queen, as her reign in Bohemia lasted just one winter before she and Frederick 
was stripped of all Palatine lands by which Habsburg emperor? Any guesses? <laughs> Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Pass. It's Ferdinand II. And finally, during the Thirty Years' War, Elizabeth became a leading power broker for the Protestant cause from her exile in which European seat of government? Come on, let's have an answer. Uh, Hamburg? No, it was The Hague. Yeah. At this point in the contest, we're going to take a music round. For your music starter, you'll hear a piece of popular music. Ten points if you can name the artist performing. You don't know me, you got a new friend. Goldsmith's Isaacson. Kanye West. It is indeed, yes. <laughs> Heartless appeared on the album 808s and Heartbreak the title of which refers to one of the earliest commercial drum machines, the Roland TR-808. For your music bonuses, three songs which feature that drum machine. I'd like you to name the artist in each case, please. Firstly, this artist. Yeah, Marvin, Marvin, Gaye. Gaye. Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye, it was sexual healing. Yeah. Secondly, I want the solo artist listed on this track. But it could still be the same. Can I guess Lionel yeah. Richie? Yeah, go for it. No, no answer. <laughs> Lionel Richie. No, it's Africa Bambata. Yeah. And finally... Whitney Houston. It is Whitney Houston, yes. Right, ten points for this. How to write a thesis, experiences in translation, a theory of semiotics, and the 1995 political essay, Er, Fascism, are... Um... Goldsmith's Isaacson. Umberto Eco. Umberto Eco is correct, yes. <laughs> you get three bonuses you'd be pleased to hear on science in the 1740s. <laughs> in 1741, who founded the Uppsala Astronomical Observatory? Later in the decade, he proposed a centigrade temperature scale. Celsius. Celsius. Yeah. Celsius. Yeah. Celsius. Correct. Secondly, in a letter of 1742 to Euler, who proposed an eponymous conjecture now usually stated as every even number greater than two is the sum of two primes? It's not Fermat. It's yeah. too late. It's too late for Fermat. It's Gauss. Mm -hmm. Gauss. Or Lagrange. Okay, for Gauss. Gauss. Yeah. Gauss. That was Christian Goldback. In yeah. the mid-1740s, the Dutch physicist Peter van Muschenbroek discovered what early form of capacitor named after the university at which he worked? Dutch... Leiden? Yes, Leiden jar, I'll accept that, yes. <laughs> Still plenty of time for you to come storming back, Paris. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ten points for this. A Germanic verb meaning strangle or throttle is the ultimate derivation of what common five-letter verb? It is used of dogs attacking sheep and of the state of being anxious or troubled about actual or potential problems. Ulip Alcock. Guilt, but no. Goldsmith's Guha. Angst. No, it's worry. Ooh. Ten points for this starter question. In ecology, what term from the Greek for ladder 
denotes the final stage of a plant succession in which vegetation reaches a state of equilibrium with the environment. Goldsmiths Isaacson. Homeostasis. Anyone like to buzz from Paris? Ulip Griffiths. Synthesis. No, it's a climax. Ten points for this. Britannicus, Andromac and Phaedra are among the tragedies of which French dramatist born in 1639? Goldsmith's Gouhar. Moliere. No, anyone like to buzz from Paris? Zut alors! <laughs> <laughs> Racine. Right, ten points for this. The Balkan mountains are located largely within which EU member state? It is bounded by the River Danube to the north and the Black Sea to the east. You live down. Croatia. No, anyone like to buzz from Goldsmiths? Goldsmiths Guhar. Bulgaria. Bulgaria is correct, yes. Your bonuses, Goldsmiths, are on the films of Daniel Day-Lewis, who announced his retirement from acting in 2017. In each case, give the title of the film from a description of the character he plays. All three are based on novels. Firstly, the Czech brain surgeon Tomas, who is involved in a complex love triangle with the artists Sabrina and Teresa. The Lives of Others. <laughs> No, it's the unbearable lightness of being. Secondly, the New York lawyer Newland Archer, who becomes involved the in the divorce of, of Countess Ellen Olenska. The Age of Innocence. The Age of Innocence. Correct. Finally, the prospector Daniel Plainview, who becomes involved in the oil business in the early 1900s. There will be blood. There will be blood. Well done. <laughs> Ten points for this picture question now a starter question for the picture round you're going to see a photograph of a Nobel laureate in literature 10 points if you can give me his name Ulip Alcock Camus it is Albert Camus <laughs> Albert Camus is by some margin the sexiest philosopher according to an ongoing <laughs> online poll by existential comics your picture bonuses are three more of the top ten sexiest philosophers, <laughs> according to that poll. Five points for each you can name. Firstly, for five... Kierkegaard. Kierkegaard? Mm -hmm. Kierkegaard? It is Kierkegaard, who was second at the time of this uh, recording. Secondly... Derrida? Any idea? Nominate Griffiths. Uh, Jacques Derrida. Correct. And finally... It's kind of German. Maybe German. <sighs> Quick, 20th century. Uh, choose someone. Anyone. Anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's have an answer, please. Uh, uh, Hegel. It's not Hegel. Hegel? Hegel? I don't know. There's a guess. <laughs> no, that's Wittgenstein. <laughs> Ten uh, points for this. In zoology, th certain species of what insect engage in the practice known as dulosis, or slave-making? Ulip Griffiths. Ants. Ants is correct, yes. <laughs> you get three questions on a first lady of the United States. Born in 1874, Lou Henry was the first woman to major in geology at Stanford University, where she met her future husband, a fellow geology student. Who was he? 1874. 1974? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, um, anything? Yeah. James? Yeah. Wilson? 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 No, it was Herbert Hoover. Oh. Lou Henry Hoover is one of the few leading US political figures to have gained a degree of proficiency in an Asian language. Which language was it? Uh, any Asian language. Korean. Mandarin, Cantonese. Mandarin. Mandarin. Yeah. Mandarin? Yes, Chinese is right. In 1919, Lou Henry Hoover received an award for her work in war relief from Albert I, the king of which country? Uh, this is easy, surely. I don't know. Victorian Albert. Come on. England? 
<laughs> Have you noticed a King Albert in this country? <laughs> we didn't hear no, the question. Belgium. <laughs> Right, ten points for this. There are about two minutes to go. Answer promptly. In the standard dictionary spelling, the expression terrific tariff agreement contains how many pairs of double letters? Hewlett Alcock. Two. Anyone uh, like to bust Goldsmith's indoors? Cox. Three. Three is correct, yes. Your bonuses are on literary titles that include the name or standard abbreviation of an SI base unit. In each case, give the title from the description. Firstly, the title of the third novel in Isaac Asimov's Foundation series. It follows Foundation and Foundation and Empire. Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> Foundation, foundation Rising. No, it's Second Foundation. <laughs> and secondly, referring to an attempt to seek immortality by cryopreservation, the title of a 2016 work by Don DeLillo. It's a, it's a, um, it's zero K or zero K, zero K, zero K. Yeah, sure. Zero K. Correct. Yeah. And finally, the eponymous character of a 1982 book by Sue Townsend and its numerous sequels. Adrian Mole. Adrian Mole. Yeah. Adrian Mole. Adrian Mole. Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. In botany, a mycorrhiza is a symbiotic association between the roots of a vascular plant and what general category of organism? Tulip <laughs> merit. Bacteria. No, anyone like to bust from Goldsmiths? Uh, Goldsmiths, goo ha! Uh, insect? That's a fungus. Ten points for this. With a perforated brick lattice facade, thin slit windows, and the appearance. <laughs> and at the gong, the London Institute in Paris have 55, Goldsmiths College London have 180, though. Well, you had a great sense of humour to take part in this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for joining us. You, you were great sports, thanks. Thank you. Uh, Goldsmiths, congratulations to you. And it didn't really matter, did it? You didn't know any science. You got plenty of uh, things more or less right. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. Congratulations. We look forward to seeing you in round two. I hope you can join us next time for another first round match. But until then, it's goodbye from the London Institute in Paris. Bye. Au revoir. <laughs> <laughs> Au revoir. <laughs> and it's goodbye from Goldsmiths College in the University of London. Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>